Hi, everyone, and welcome to Connect TV. My name is Sharon Langan, and today I'm joined here virtually by Chris Martin, who's the Life Sciences Technical Accounting Consulting Leader with RSM US. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us today. Um, and just to start off, I'd love if you could give us a bit of background on your role at RSM. Sure, uh, thanks for uh, having me here and happy to, happy to share some thoughts. Yeah, so in my role at RSM um, in the technical accounting consulting practice, we're really helping clients um, work through complex technical issues, help operationalize those things. And, and as you can imagine, uh, over the past year plus, we've done a lot of work uh, with clients going public um, via traditional IPO path and a SPAC path too. Um, and you know, it's, it's a heavy lift for clients uh, to get through all they need to get through to get to a filing and beyond. And so, you know, that's where our uh, practice comes into play and, and, and provides that assist. Terrific. Thank you. And now at Informa, we've enjoyed a partnership, as you know, with RSM for many years, um, most notably in the annual finance and accounting for bioscience companies conference. And this year it's being held in, San, in September in San Francisco and then in Boston as well. And we have a virtual option for that. Your team at RSM has contributed tremendous uh, thought leadership to the development of that conference. So thank you. Um, now, Chris, in your role at RSM, you certainly have a purview across a broad range of issues impacting the life sciences sector. So um, as you mentioned, IPO, biotech continues to be the dominant sector for new market entrants. And I think as of June 2021, biotech had made up roughly 70% of all life sciences IPOs and capital raised to date um, this year. So what are you seeing in the market with your clients and what do you think is driving this? Yeah, you're right. Um, it, it's definitely been a, a busy year for life sciences IPOs. I, I know it's a high in quantity uh, for the year uh, among comparable years recently too. I think it's a factor of a couple different things. Number one, you've got really strongly performing markets. Uh, you know, I think obviously when you're, you're in a bull market and, and a growth market that's receptive to public offering transactions. Uh, you know, number two, there's a significant amount of available capital to be invested. Um, that's been the case over the pa past year plus. And then I think thirdly, um, life sciences is, is kind of viewed in a positive light, certainly with the role the industry played in, in the pandemic and continues to play with the pandemic, as well as all the other therapeutics um, and, and devices and whatnot that are being innovated. I think there's an overall positive view of the industry. And so I think that's attracting investors along the way. Um, I think the other things that really drive companies' decisions to go public are really around what their investors, key investors are thinking, what their board members are thinking, and a lot of times what their peer companies are doing. And so um, you know, we're certainly seeing companies go public uh, earlier in their life cycle. Um, and a lot of that's driven by uh, what their peers may be doing in the marketplace too. So I think those are really kind of the key drivers of all the activity that's happened in the past year. Great points. And we can't talk about the IPO market with touching on the recent SPAC boom, um, whose popularity really exploded in 2020, resulting in a 320% increase in the number of uh, SPAC IPOs compared to the prior 2019. So as more investors look to SPACs as an IPO alternative, do you think this will change the way biotech companies access public markets in the long term? Yeah, the short answer to that is yes. I mean, I, I think, you know, with the with the increase in frequency of SPACs in the life sciences space, I think it's a more comfortable or more known avenue for companies going forward. So I think it's always going to be an avenue. Um, will it be of the same frequency and frenzy that it's been in the past year? Probably not. But I do think it's known, it's a, it's a viable uh, pathway. Um, so I do think it'll be a factor long term. Now, you know, whether that's the right path to the company, I think depends on a couple of different things. It depends on timing, depends on preparation. And is that the right fit? I mean, I think one of the main considerations here is will the target company be able to attract additional financing from pipe investors? So, you know, when they complete the DSPAC process, they'll have capital that they expected to raise to really kind of grow and continue to invest in the company, which is really the main purpose of the IPO. Yeah. So, so now if I'm a biotech or a biopharma executive and I know that an IPO is on the horizon, what are some of the things that I should be thinking about? Uh, yeah, it's a great question, and, and I think what we're often seeing with our clients right now is there may be timelines, and then those timelines can change. And so the main question is, if I'm a leader for a life sciences company, how organizationally prepared are we as a company to go public? And I don't really just mean that from a financial reporting perspective, which is what my group deals with. 
that's obviously significant. You got to get financial statements and a registration statement, but it's really around the organizational structure and the building blocks that uh, to help you know companies operate effectively as a public company. So things like systems, processes, controls, governance, and human capital um, are all important areas to invest, and things that need to be looked at based on the timelines that are being uh, talked about. You know, having those things in place uh, really help will help a company operate efficiently and have access to key reliable data in a timely fashion. Um, and the other thing I would say is, you know, often with biosciences companies, biopharma companies in this stage, most of the capital they've raised today is being focused on R&D, which is appropriate. It's what you want mm -hmm. them to do. They're trying to grow their pipeline and their product candidates along the way. But I think if they're thinking about IPO on the horizon, they should begin to allocate some GNA dollars or some dollars to GNA and IT. Uh, mm -hmm. to really kind of start to invest in those areas so they're organizationally prepared. You know, a lot of times that's kind of the big inhibitor to getting through a transaction is, is you know, really kind of having the GNA finance and systems uh, as well as the controls in place uh, to be able to kind of execute a public offering. And the public offering isn't truly the finish line. So as companies are working through the IPO journey, what should they be thinking about for life as a public company after the IPO? Right, and it's really building off of the last question around being prepared. Mm -hmm. it's, it's now enhancing your structure and how can I design my organization and build my infrastructure from an organization to anticipate change, be prepared for rapid growth, uh, take advantage of opportunities, um, and also handle the added complexities of doing business as a public company. Um, and that really stems from having the right people, processes, systems, controls um, in place and investing in those areas. Uh, you know, and I, I would say kind of where companies should focus in life sciences space, certainly on IT systems, you know, regula regulatory and quality functions, um, the people with the right experience to operate the company effectively as a public company. Those are all kind of important areas. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, when things are in place, companies are really better able to handle rapid change, mm -hmm. uh, anticipate things that might happen. Also, again, be opportunistic uh, to help the business grow. Yeah. Well, this is a, a really a hot topic. We hear it quite frequently with our audiences that attend the conferences. And um, I appreciate you spending some time with us today on Connect TV and sharing your insights. I know you have incredible experience uh, working with bioscience and biopharma companies through this process. So uh, we really appreciate your insights and uh, we'll have to do this again soon. Thank you, Chris. Sure, thanks for having me and really enjoyed it.